Hey everyone, welcome to my final video on the LEGO Universal Sorter. So in this video, I'll be showing off what I accomplished before I take it apart and use the pieces for other things. So I didn't quite get to the goal of being able to dump a bunch of pieces in and have it sort any kind of Lego piece it sees. However, I did get to the point where I can dump any Lego piece in and it'll spit them out one by one for the camera to read down here. I just didn't quite get that module working or know how to do the rest of it, especially on the software side. But looking at what we have here, this machine's actually really interesting. So starting off at the hopper, it's basically consists of a ramp right here, then you have this flap in the center and the conveyor belt. And all of this was specially designed to work without flaws or any errors. So the flap itself is held down by a big counterweight at the bottom. And this also has shock absorbers on it because it's so heavy. And the point of this mechanism is to make it so that when the flap gets pushed up by these big Technic beams, it slams down as fast as possible to not have pieces slipping through the crack that happens when it's forced up. Now next to the belt and the flap at the bottom of the hopper, there's actually a really cool wall design here. Just trying to use Technic pieces and some system studs to fill all the little gaps so no little pieces fall out of this containment area. Now the belt itself is actually pretty neat. It's got a bunch of these grippy rubber pieces on them that I stuck in to make pieces stick and not slide down the belts very easily. And then it actually took a while to get the number of these beams just right. I think there's three on here at the moment and basically having them spaced out a lot allows for large pieces to be pulled up because if you have too many, large pieces will just slide right over them. Now this main belt has to go really slow so that the rest of the machine doesn't get overwhelmed with too many parts. And to accomplish this, I have a little gearbox here just using a worm gear to slow down the motor's rotations to get a nice slow and high torque power to the belts. Now the next section is actually one of my favorites. It's the second conveyor belt. And this one was really fun to design because I'm trying to contain pieces and stop them from bouncing out because they do take a bit of a fall from the main conveyor belt to this secondary one. So to prevent pieces from falling out, the first layer of defense is, of course, this conveyor belt is tensioned in a way that pieces just can't really bounce very well on it. They hit it and it absorbs most of the power and energy of them falling. Then to prevent further things from slipping out, as you can see, I filled these gaps pretty small and tight there. So it's going to be really hard for pieces to slip out any cracks near the belt. Along the sides, I just use Technic beams to make all these walls. And then on the side where the pieces actually slip out, there's these flaps. And I got this idea from a bunch of different things, but most notably at airports when you're at the baggage claim. And so basically what these do is when a piece is coming through this conveyor belt and it's going out, these flaps help make sure that pieces stacked on top of each other will get wiped off each other. And there's a less likelihood of multiple pieces landing on each other when they hit the vibration table. And then also it helps the pieces just fall more straight and accurately down. And so I think these flaps are pretty cool. Plus when pieces are falling down from the main conveyor belt into the second conveyor belt, it also helps with pieces bouncing around. They won't just bounce out if I had a big hole there where these flaps are. And the last main functional section of the machine that I have right here is the vibration table. And this is basically made of a bunch of massive tiles that I got from all sorts of sets. And these are made from a bunch of big Lego tile pieces at a 90 degree angle from each other. And they are vibrated by this tiny little crankshaft piece used in Lego cylinder engines. And I just have a motor running this with some gears to speed up the rotations. And then this is attached to a lift arm beam, which is attached to one of the sides of the vibration table. And at the right speeds, it can actually do a pretty good job of making sure that if pieces are stacked on each other, they come off. So that way you can feed just one piece out of this at a time. The angle of the vibration table is just at a slight slant and it's on a diagonal using these big bearing pieces. And I find that pretty cool because at a slight slant, it allows the pieces to not roll down it unless it's moving. And the last final section I built was this at the end. It's just a prototype of a scanning bed where pieces would land in, a phone camera or some other camera would look at the pieces over this clean white surface. And then once they're scanned in, 
it would just tip them off to the next robot, which would go drive around and deliver them to their piles. And, and it has space down here for a counterweight, although that was gonna be really difficult to design since I'm trying to make this entire machine out of only official Lego parts. And yeah, that's basically the last part I made. I'm really proud of how the support structures came about and they just look really awesome. It's pretty simple and it mostly uses pieces only from the Lego Leopard Excavator and the Porsche 911 RSR sets with pieces, of course, sourced from other sets such as these big tiles. It's unfortunate that I didn't quite get any of the software working for AI image recognition, but maybe in the future someone else will get that working on an all Lego Lego sorter. So thanks so much for watching, and if you want to see me build more huge creations like this in the future, then be sure to stay tuned by subscribing or commenting your ideas down below.